I'm Bo. And I'm Jamie. And this is the only podcast that would dare ask the Christmas wreath-tinged question, the tinseled question, hey Jamie, what you watching? <laughs> I am watching you flounder with that metaphor. <laughs> Why flounder? Why not? <laughs> Oh uh, yeah, sadly I have not gotten trapped in my library recently, so I don't have a story like that to share this time. Oh, that's a shame. <laughs> By the way, Duncan got a big kick out of that too. <laughs> yeah, it's a it's a, it, that's a really great story. That's really funny. <laughs> uh, but I have been watching a lot of stuff and some new Christmas movies, and oh, not no doubt, the, not the Hallmark kind, because you know I don't go that way, but. Uh, We went to see Violent Night. Oh, yeah, the David Harbour joint. How was that? Yeah, fucking fun. Oh, my God. First of all, it's um, done by uh, Wercola, who did uh, Dead Snow um, Mm. and Dead Dead Snow 2. And then there was... Well, I think think the correct pronunciation is Dead Snow. Oh, you were correct. I think there's an umlaut. There is an umlaut. Dead Snow, uh, Tommy Ricola. He did another movie. Oh, uh, um, um, Hansel and Gretel Witch Hunters. Yeah, I, I keep meaning to. Yeah, I, I I remember that being pretty good. I keep meaning to go back and rewatch that and see if it's as good as I remember it, or or at least I like. I don't remember it being great, but I remember it being fun. Yeah, this uh, this I thought this was a blast. It's I mean I'm sure everyone's heard everything about it as far as. Uh, the things you've heard about it are Die Hard and Home Alone. And that is exactly right. And as a matter of fact, they name check both of those movies in this movie. So it's clear that he was inspired by them. Plus, you've got Beverly D'Angelo in this movie, who is that is hilarious because she is really well known for playing Ellen Griswold. And then, you know, Christmas Vacation is one of the best Christmas movies of all time. So uh, she plays a super rich bitchy woman in this which is great uh john leguizamo is uh head of the bad guys and it's all about these people who are this rich family in this mansion who are getting uh held hostage on christmas eve by these people who are trying to do a heist and santa claus the real santa claus happens in and then um he sort of reluctantly at first He's kind of, he's a, he's like a drunk. He's like pissing off the side of his sleigh while he's in the air. Like he is just, he is over Christmas because you like kids today, all they want is video games and cash. So he's kind of over it. And he's saying this is going to be his last Christmas, but he gets embroiled in this and the blood starts to fly. And I got to tell you, if you are familiar with Ricola's work from like Dead Snow, then you know how he loves his gore and he does not slow that down here. It is gory as hell. It's so much fun. It's not a horror film. <coughs> it's more, excuse me, it's more an action comedy with a lot of gore. So I think it's one of those movies that is kind of like a crossover movie where people who are not horror fans may not appreciate the amount of gore that's in the movie or violence but if you are a horror fan even though it's not a horror movie i think you can appreciate it because it's just so like hilarious and over the top and just uh it's just great i had such a good time with it and it did really well uh, at least opening weekend i think um and i'm i'm excited about that i want it to do well because i love his work so i want him to get this I want his like this theatrical release for him in the U.S. to do extremely well, so that maybe people who aren't familiar with his other work will then. Um... Now I know that the uh, Hansel and Gretel Witch Hunters did come out in the theater, but he mm-hmm. hasn't really done anything since then. Uh, I'm looking so... at his IMDb. He did What Happened to Monday, which was a Netflix streaming thing. <gasps> oh my god! I didn't know that was him. One of my coworkers has been bugging me to watch that for weeks. He did. I had no idea that was him. There's another movie he did that was foreign that sounds great. I can't believe I haven't seen this, but he did this last year called The Trip with uh, Numi Rapace. Uh, oh my God, that movie is great. Yeah, so he did that. Um, yeah. 
Then the next two movies he's got on deck is one called Spermageddon. Eh. Uh, and another one called Death Romance. Both of them, it looks like, kind of uh, foreign. Actually, okay. Spermageddon looks like it's animated, which is even better. And... Um, Huh. Okay. Well, yeah, anyway, it, it, the guy's got kind of an interesting, you know, like not just the Dead Snow stuff, but like has yeah. an interesting filmography. He hasn't done I a lot, but totally forgot he did the trip. I completely forgot that, and that is a great movie. If you haven't seen that one, I highly recommend it. It's also very funny, um, and very gory. <laughs> yeah. And uh, I mean, that's that's what he does. You know, it's very violent, but the violence is hilarious and. Uh, it's just that's a really fun movie so yeah honestly i recommend his entire catalog everything that i've seen anyway um and that would be dead snow dead snow 2 uh hansel and gretel the trip and now violent night he is just on fire i love this guy so yeah it was it was interesting to see this like when we were in new york recently in like times square there were big uh posters for violent night i was like what a weird movie to be advertising in times square but i i kind of appreciate the fact that like you know they were going hard on the advertising for it but it sounds like it would be a lot of fun and it and i you know i just i have not been to the movies i might sneak off and see this maybe maybe thursday anyway that you don't you don't need to be part of that planning but <laughs> But I like I. This might be a movie that I just like sneak off and hit a matinee, and, and uh, watch or I something. I say it's totally worth your time. I think you'll. I think you'll dig it. It's so much fun. Yeah, I'm just like the trailer is playing as I'm talking to you and seeing him like stab people with candy canes and stuff. I'm like, oh, this looks like it. It's violent, which is you know, hence the title, I suppose. Uh, well, yeah, and they go all in on the Christmas theme too, and I love when themed movies do that. You know, so he's like. He's, you know, using ice skates and candy canes and tinsel and Christmas lights and all these, you know, all these things. Plus, he's got his Santa magic where he's kind of limited as to what he can do and he doesn't know how it works. <laughs> huh, <laughs> but, okay. uh, and he has an interesting backstory, too. So, yeah, I, I you need to go see it and then you need to tell me what you think. OK. All right. Yeah, that sounds fun. All right. Um I have been doing, and next month, ladies and jelly spoons who are listening, next month we will be doing our annual, um, which I'm happy to say now, it will be our second annual, I think, um, yeah. look at the, our best horror movies of the year. And yes, so I have been catching up on, you know, the horror movies that I need to watch. I still haven't watched uh, Speak No Evil, which I know you recommended to me, but it's on my short list. I will see that w before we, we talk about our end of year list. I will see it. Okay. Um, yeah, Duncan and I actually ended up doing a bonus quick review of that movie because fuck Witch House. That movie, there was really nothing to say about Witch House. And he's like, fuck this. What do you want to talk about? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. He told me we were doing that Michael Mann uh, episode, and somehow or another, like Witch House, like that really got in his craw. He really did not <laughs> like Witch yeah, House. Yeah, he's like, he's like, it was a listener choice episode, and he's like, fuck them, they know what they did. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he was not pleased. Um, but all right, <laughs> so I watched a movie called Saloom. Okay. Which was... I have seen it. Not seen it. I haven't seen it, but I saw it. <laughs> All right. I saw that it existed. I've okay. seen the title, but I haven't watched it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, <laughs> and Duncan was real big on it. And so, um, like, I, I wasn't like, well, Duncan recommended it, so I'm going to watch that and not the one that Jamie recommended. It's just that Saloom happened to be a little bit shorter. So, you yes, know, you were, you know, sometimes, sometimes you go for the one that's like, oh, how long? 91 minutes done and done. No, nah, it's true. Um, and so, all right. So the premise is that you have this, like, uh, a, a trio of mercenaries, uh, named like Chaka, uh, Rafa and Papa Minui. Uh, like Chaka from Land of the Lost? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> 
uh, <laughs> Chaka Talk Thai. Very good. <laughs> <laughs> I just I just thought of a side note real quick. Have you ever seen Ghost Adventures? That that ghost hunting show with Zach Bagans? Yeah, 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 of course. Yeah. I always say his hair <laughs> He looks like a sleaze stack. <laughs> <laughs> uh, you know, all right, here's the thing. This is a little detour before we talk about Saloon, which we totally should. <laughs> So another thing that came up on that uh, Michael Mann movie uh, podcast with uh, Doug uh, Doug Tilly. So in fairness, like that's always a, a lot of fun as well. We were, you know, we were talking earlier about how much fun it is when like you and me and Duncan get together. Like Doug is another one that like when me, me and Doug and Duncan all get together, we just nerd out on a director once a year. And that's always a real fun time. But um we were uh where was i going with this oh man the old man uh, is kicking I, in i said slee stack yeah all right uh we'll get back to it um so saloon i totally forgot what i was gonna say about that it was something about uh it came up on that michael mann episode and i just can't remember uh i'm god i swear to god it's it's the kids it's that's it's what's adventures. doing it to me yeah, they'll they'll suck it out of you. Yeah. Anyway, so Saloon <laughs> is metaphorically. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Metaphorically, I I don't know. They could be sneaking in at night and draining my blood and life essence. Who knows? Um. But all right. So it's kind of a a fable or a parable, if you will. Um. Uh, but about these three mercenaries who are very cool, uh, particularly Papa Menui, who is like a kind of a witch doctor kind of dude, uh, who is part of these mercenaries. Anyway, he's like got this powder he could blow in your face that will make you fall asleep for a while. It's cool. Um, and anyway, so they are in the middle of the, this like African civil war. They are rescuing this drug dealer and getting him out and or taking him out and and taking him from this like area that is beset by civil war to dakar but while they're flying from the civil war area to dakar they realize that they uh the they're losing gas and so they've got to land and so chaka chaka talk tie very good um Oh, all right. Now, hold on. Put a pin in that. Now I remember the Zach Bagans thing. That's what got okay. me there. Okay. So we were talking about how um, there is a show on Netflix called like 28 Day Haunted or something like that. And it's basically, it's it's a very Zach Bagans kind of thing, although I don't think he's involved with it, where he, uh, it, it's a bunch of people that are like, hey, we're going to go stay at this haunted place for 28 days and film it all. And it is, like, I watched, like, an episode and a half of it and just felt dirty. And, uh, you know, because it is just the, kind of the worst found foot, not even found footage, but, like, that reality TV ghost hunting thing mm -hmm. where it's just people like, oh, my God, you can tell that this place is haunted. The atmosphere is getting thick. And it's like, well, that doesn't translate to a visual medium at all that's just you as a fat crazy person saying that like the atmosphere is getting thick so is the <laughs> bullshit yeah excuse me yeah but it, but totally it's just like you know i'm starting to feel itchy and weird it's like yeah you haven't taken a shower in three days of course you feel itchy and weird you know <laughs> <laughs> you're trapped in the same space for a month um oh it's so dumb but yeah, and and Duncan was like, "Oh, I watched the whole thing. I couldn't get enough. It was terrible. It was just like it's such a stark difference in our personalities. Of you are you are just eating up this just awful like TV junk food that is you know kind of hate watching it, right? And I was just like, I can't, I can't do this. I just don't have enough time to hate watch something that I know is just going to make me angry." <laughs> If I want to be angry, I'll talk to the kids. Um, so, anyway. 
So, all right, back to Saloon. So, yeah, so they land in Saloon, which uh, is um, like an area near Dakar, and it's like this beautiful Delta Valley and stuff like that. And there's a town that is mostly empty nearby, and there's a guy that is like really... um, really gregarious and seems to be kind of running the town. Um, and a guy named Omar. And so he's like, Hey, you know, it, it, we live in this cool place. Like, uh, you can stay here for a couple of nights and get your bearings. And these mercenaries are posing as sort of not exactly tourists, but like they work for, uh, some government agency and they're like researching the area and um he's like hey you can have anything you want and one of the guys uh uh rafa starts like pounding a couple of drinks he's like but we don't accept payment you just have to perform a task for the village in this case like rafa you've got to clean up the bar because you were drinking and rafa's like oh you set me up you son of a bitch and (laughs) anyway but as they're kind of get like going to dinner with Omar and a couple of other people who are staying in this town, um, sort of strangers who kind of wander in and like, it it starts to become clear that one of the strangers knows who they are really. And then the question becomes, well, did they get there by accident or did they end up landing in Saloon on purpose? And also there are these kind of, weird devil creatures that will come out in the absence of Omar. And anyway, so it's all, but the the whole story is ultimately a story about vengeance, about revenge. And in fact, early on, they're like, you know, there's, there's an old African saying that vengeance is like a river that consumed. And the only way to, to get, to get to the bottom of it is to drown. And so the whole story, ultimately, of course, a story about how vengeance will consume you. And, but it's really cool. Like it's, it's, like I said, it's only 90 minutes, which is the reason I watched it. Uh, Cause it was on a, a couple of like best of list and Duncan had recommended it. And I wanted to at least see it before I assembled an end of year list. And, uh, and it was really cool. Like it, it's, it's kind of stylish. It's got just a whiff of Tarantino kind of dialogue and and the style of titles and that kind of thing even in some of the subtitles and so forth um it's all in french just you know for what it's worth for people who are like i i'm not going to read a movie then perhaps saloon is not for you but it's cool like the the monsters have a really interesting design to them um and yeah it's cool like it, it, you know it gets to some you know i don't want to say stereotypical but like when you think of african warlords and the evils that they visit upon their people it gets into some of that um and it's cool and like the characters are really fun and i think for a movie like this to work you have to kind of be on the side of these mercenaries and they're good characters they're really fun like again papa minui is super cool him just occasionally pulling out a handful of dust and blowing it into some fool's face to knock him out is is cool rafa is this like you know kind of white bearded um like clearly has dyed his beard blonde but he's just this huge you know like black dude that looks like he he, he could punch you through next week and it, but he's like a really funny character and it's just really good. Like it's one of those movies uh, that it, it's on shutter. Totally recommend it. Um, it, it is a, a well done action horror film and it's got something to say. So yeah, it was really good. I really enjoyed my time with Saloon and, and, you know, even after watching, you know, for all its brevity being the reason that I watched it, it was a movie that after I saw it, I was like, you know, kind of revisiting in my mind, like, man, that was, you know, it, it, it feels uh, a little light to say that it's just cool, but it is a cool movie. 
you know, <laughs> like at the other end of it, it was like, man, that, that was done by a director who knows how to throw a movie together with some style. Well, I always appreciate that. Yeah. Some style. <laughs> um, <laughs> uh, what about you? What else have you been watching? Okay, well, I have another new Christmas watch. And this is the newest film from Joe Bagos, who gave us uh, v- VFW and I forget what the other one was. Mind's but... Eye, um, Almost Human. No. I'm pretty sure those are Joe Bagos movies. They might be, but that's not what I'm talking about. Oh. But anyway, this is... Um... There was a one before VFW, and I don't remember what it was. But Bliss? This, yes. Yes. I knew it was something that I watched and Brian refused to watch. That was, uh, and that's uh-huh. what it was. Yeah, because he's, <laughs> I had to watch it for a summer series last year. And he was, he's so, uh, I was like, I got to watch Bliss. You want to watch it with me? And he's like, is that another vampire drug movie? And I was like, yeah. And he's like, no. And so I ended up watching it at like 3 a.m. And the next day I was like, so I watched Bliss and he's like, well, and I'm like, you were right. It was another vampire drug movie. <laughs> yeah. But um, anyway, the, but but I really like Joe Bagos. He's fun. This is Christmas Bloody Christmas. It just came out December 9th and uh, it's on Shudder. And it's really fun too. The The premise behind this one is that there is a mechanical santa claus that i guess from what i gathered uh they are decommissioned military robots that have been turned into santa clauses for decoration um i guess they figure i don't know if maybe their contract fell through if the government didn't want them anymore or something but they've maybe they figured we got to make some kind of money so they dressed them up like santa and then they sold them mm-hmm. like well you there's do. There's one in this small town and it's in a toy, sh- a toy store. And, um, it, uh, it, you know, you can see it coming. It comes for, it comes to life and just goes on a rampage, just like a murderous rampage. But it's, it's kind of hilarious. Cause at the end they do this really cool thing where it's a completely automated robot and you and they you can tell they put a lot of effort into this this piece and it's really cool but before it gets to that point it's kubiak <laughs> dressed like santa claus just and he's walking kind of stiffly and they have they have like mechanical sounds in the background so it's supposed to be a robot but it's clearly kubiak dressed like santa claus but it's it's cool it's like a slasher only he's a mechanical killer and what I like about it is they spend, you have to be prepared because the first, I would, good chunk of the movie is all character stuff. Like nothing really happens until well into the film. But it's one of those that once it kicks off, it fucking kicks off. And it's very gory. <clears throat> and um, it also, this is one that you may not want to, for people out there, you may not want to to watch it with your kids, be your own judge. But there's a lot of uh, like sexual stuff. There's a lot of, of cursing. There's actually, I want to say they use the word fuck 547 times or something like that. Mm-hmm. I actually looked it up because it's every, it, it turns out to be an average of 5.62 times per minute. Oh, that wow. Somebody's saying fuck. So it's just like, fuck, 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 fuck. But um, I, I just think it's, it's really tragic by the time you get to the end for the final girl. You like, you feel really bad for her, all the bullshit she's gone through and everything she's lost. But it is, uh, it's neat because the Santa, because he's mechanical, doesn't move all that fast. So you're like, well, hell, all you gotta do is, you know, walk, you know, walk briskly. You could get away from him. But what I said to Brian, when we were watching it. I'm like, I like this because he's slow, but once he, once he fixates on something and it doesn't have to, it's not like he has a personal vendetta. He's a fucking machine, you know, but once he sees something and he fixates on it, he goes for it and he will keep going for it. Like he's relentless. Um, and 
I told Brian, we're watching it. I'm like, I guarantee you that he's moving slow now and it doesn't seem all that threatening, but all he has to do is get everyone into a centralized location where they can't get away all that easily. And I was like, I, heads are going to fly, you know? And uh, cause you could just tell he was just going to be that kind that brutal. And I got, there are, yeah. I mean, it's, it's gory as hell. Like people get split in half. People get like decapitated. I mean, there's just limbs flying and blood flying. And they do a lot of things that are really smart when it comes to slasher movies. And you see the same things over and over again in slasher movies. And you're like, ah, God damn it. But she's really smart. She does a lot of smart things. She makes a lot of smart decisions. And so it's clear that when he was making this movie, he's like, I'm not going to fall into the same traps that all these other movies keep falling into. And I think he did a really good job. It, uh, it actually came out a little bit lower for me. So it wasn't like a straight up five, like I didn't fully love it. And that's only because it takes so long to, to get going. But then I really feel like if I watch it again, I think it'll go up because now going into it the second time, I'm prepared for that. I'm prepared for all the character stuff in the beginning. I'm prepared for all the, the buildup that we get before anything actually pops off. And so I really think that once I watch it a second time, I will absolutely love it just because it, once it gets going, it it's really fun. So I recommend that one too. And if you're in for a bloody Christmas, we've got two really bloody brand new Christmas movies. And this one is a horror movie. So straight up horror. So go for it. Here's what I like about it. Uh, Jeremy Gardner is in it. Yes. Yes. And anytime Jeremy Gardner is getting money to hopefully uh, make another movie someday, I am a happy guy. I, yes, I was, I saw his name. And uh, when we were watching the movie, I saw his name and I'm like, oh my God. I yeah. Cause I just, I love him and anything he does. He's yeah, great. I, I couldn't agree more. I, you know, and I've said this before and I do not want to uh, bag on Bagos, um, which is my other podcast. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I, my problem with, with Joe Bagos, and maybe this will be the movie that turns it around. But every time I see a movie that he's done, I'm like, oh, yeah, I like that the first time when it was called whatever, you know, right. and like, well, that's exactly the problem I had with Bliss, you know, like, exactly. I don't think it was a bad movie. It was well made, but I've seen it before. Yeah, everything and... about it. Yeah, felt very familiar. And I just didn't like the main character. I just I thought that it had a very off putting protagonist and it was hard for I, me to get yeah. through. I agree with that, too. Um, but even stuff like VFW, it was like, I liked this the first time when it was called Assault on Precinct 13. Precinct 13, and, yeah. You know, like, I I don't think he's a bad director, and I think he, he makes fun movies, but I just keep waiting for him to make a movie that doesn't feel like a movie that I've seen before. And, uh, 100%. And I, I think this might be the one. Okay, good, good. I, I'm I always do. rooting for that. Because, yeah, I mean, he does things in here that you don't typically see, and it's, it is fresh, you know. I mean, we've seen murderous Santa Clauses before. That's not new. But the fact that it's a friggin' robot, so, you know, shooting him's not going to take him down. You know, hit him over, hitting him over the head with something is not going to take him down. Like, this is a completely, and it was a military-grade robot. So this is something that is like a faux that we've just never seen before. And I really like how, I like how he works it in. I like how creative he is with it. I really think this might be his definitive movie because I completely agree uh, about even, yeah, VFW, I said exactly the same thing. Assault on Precinct 13 is my favorite Carpenter movie. I love that movie, but I love that movie. I don't need to see it again. <laughs> but even though yeah. VFW was fun, it just wasn't all that original. And then you put in on top of that, his Carpenter inspired score and everything that goes with that. And then it just sort of pounds it that much deeper how Carpenter inspired that whole thing is. And Bliss, it was a well-made movie, but uh, also Jeremy Gardner, yay. But you don't, 
it's not like we haven't seen that before. And you're absolutely right. I didn't like the main character either. So, you know, but this one I think is pretty, it's pretty original, you know? So yeah, give it a watch and let me know what you think. I think you'll enjoy it. Great. I'll tell you one that I really liked and stands a real good chance of being a movie we'll, we'll talk about on an end of year list. Um, but I finally caught up to smile. Oh yeah. And, uh, smile rocks. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it does. It does. And it didn't have any right to like, it was, I was like, what? Cause that's not what I expected go. It was a total fun surprise for me because I was expecting like another truth or dare, you know? Totally. And, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. I mean, well, right. As soon as you saw the trailer for it, it was like, oh, you mean like truth or dare? Right. But no, it is it is not that. It's got much more depth than that. It's got, and freaking Sozie Bacon, who I just found out is Kevin Bacon's daughter. Mm -hmm. um, I didn't know that going in. I was like, I wonder, because when we were watching it, I was like, I wonder if she's related to Kevin Bacon, but I never looked it up. But yeah, that's his daughter. And uh, she kills it. I think she's amazing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, I, I totally agree. I, I think it's an interesting story. It, it kind of, like, it's... <sighs> It reminds me a lot of Verbinski's The Ring, and and not just because of the, like, hey, you're going to die in seven days kind of thing, uh, even though there is sort of that element to it, but it's got th that style, um, you know, that, that sense mm -hmm. of, like, you are watching a big budget, big deal movie, even though I don't think the budget on it was that big, but it looks good, and yeah. it feels... Uh, like, like the moment where I was like, oh, okay, this is a real movie <laughs> is that scene where you see the girl uh, early on. It's a, it's one, one of the opening scenes at the hospital and you see that overhead shot of the ambulance pulling up and the girl uh, that we'll meet moments mm -hmm. later uh, being taken out of the back of the ambulance freaking out and the camera just tilts up to the window where Sosie Bacon is getting a phone call after having just left the office because she's been working a long shift. And you see, like, the, the camera just holds on her phone ringing until she comes back in to answer it. And it was it was just one of those shots of, like, oh, this is a good director that is telling us a lot with a very simple camera movement. And, like, all of a sudden, I now understand... Sosie Bacon's character as far as her relationship to work and that she doesn't really want to go home and face her demons and also that is going to tie this character that was freaking out in the ambulance to her through this visual cue and like all of that stuff it was just like oh this okay the right real movie got it got it this isn't just the usual cheap crap I watch right no you're absolutely right especially about the part where it sort of defines who she is because she had just been told you need to go home. You've been here too long, you know, whatever you're working too much, get the hell out. And, you know, she goes to leave and then you see the phone ring and you know, you know, she's not going to leave. She's going to come back and answer that phone. Mm -hmm. And when she does, that tells you right then and there who she is mm -hmm. and how important this work is to her. And it endears you to, or at least to me, you know, that she gives a damn. And, um, so then you immediately, you're like, okay, well, if I wasn't sold on her as a character before, I am now. You know, I you know, I appreciate who she is. And um, then it just goes goes deeper and, and farther. And then you get to the end and I'm like, oh, like it would just, <laughs> yeah. oh my God. <laughs> you know, and I, I, I said this before, but one of the things that really impressed me most about the movie is how good it is at, doing that like oh is this reality or is this more of her you know the curse or her mind playing tricks on her or whatever yeah you know the weight of her uh her past and all that and so many movies do those kind of those tricks of like oh you know it, it's like the the wake up from the dream to have a scare and then you wake up from the dream it's like oh you tricked me it was you were still asleep when you had that last scare and you know, that always feels like a cheap little gag, but this movie does a really fine job of really blurring the line between like dark fantasy and reality in a way 
that makes you really empathize with Sosie Bacon's character where you're like, that would suck. I mean, if you like that, the conversation she has with her therapist and all of a sudden you realize like, oh, she's not actually talking to her therapist. Oh my God. And that scene where she realizes it and then the therapist just gets up off the couch and comes straight for her, like just starts running at her. Um, I, that legitimately scared the shit out yeah. of me. <laughs> yeah. It's really like, good. Oh it, my God. <laughs> right. And the, so, I mean, it reminds me a little bit of um, something like Annabelle creation where it's like, this is a, you know, like a, a budgeted Hollywood movie, but it's also legitimately scary and yeah. and they're rare so when one of these comes along i like i really enjoy kind of celebrating it because most of the horror that i really respond to tends to be like yeah i mean some of it will find its way into theaters like the a24 stuff and that kind of thing but most of the time i'm like hey, yeah i saw this on this you know shutter or you know it, it's a dutch film that i had to stream from butter and yet and or whatever it is <laughs> and <laughs> <laughs> and so when like something comes out in the theater that's legitimately great it, it feels like i get excited about because i'm like oh no here in america we can still make really good frightening movies you don't have to leave it up to you know these kind of boutique production houses and and i'm sure there'll be a smile too and i'm sure that i'll see it and you know because it did really well as it should have and i'm glad that it did so am I. Um, Plus, they they pumped the money into the marketing for that movie. They marketed the hell out of it, and I'm glad. Yeah, I I, I like to see that. Well, and it was clever marketing, like the the one um where they had the the person sit behind the, home plate yeah. of the baseball game, just smiling all creepy the whole time. Yeah, it's like that's that's pretty good. Well done. Um, but yeah, I thought it was great, and and like I said, I can't you know I haven't started assembling my list, but it's kind of. Like, if I were to do my top ten list today, Smile would, would be on there. I don't know where it would fall exactly, but I was really... I got When I got done with it, I was really... Even though it's got a, a kind of a grim ending, um, I left that movie really excited about, like, being a horror movie fan. Because I was like, oh, that was that was awesome. Um, I, yeah. Oh, so good. I was so glad that I saw it. Um yeah, yeah. I wish I had seen that in the theater. That's the, the my one regret is I didn't, and I I meant to. I was trying to get out to to the theater to catch it, and I just never got to it. And I would have liked to have seen that with an audience because I'm sure there were like some good like gasps and screams and stuff like that. Yeah, it was fun. We saw it with a a, a relatively small crowd, but a, you know it, there were other people there, and they seemed to enjoy it too. So that was cool. All right. Well, what about you? What else you been uh, checking out? Um, are you a Clerks fan? I am. I am. Okay. Uh, Did you see Clerks three yet? I have not. It, again, kind of on my list of things to do. But right now, I'm just watching mostly horror movies. Yeah. Um, uh, well, we ran across it and watched it a couple weeks ago, and I gotta tell you, man, it was really fucking good. I. I was bawling by the time we got to the end, which, you know, no shock there, but, um, <laughs> it went, Jamie crying. That doesn't sound like the Jamie I know, but it, um, like it took me two watches to where I really appreciated clerks too. And, um, I, like I've always loved clerks. Like I was living that life back then when clerks came out, I mm -hmm. was managing a convenience store. Yeah. <laughs> so Great soundtrack too, by the way, it was, clerks is an underrated soundtrack. Oh yeah. Um, and so when that movie came out, I was in that life. And we actually did things like we would play before I even saw that movie, we were playing hockey in the store, but with like cans of skull and, um, <laughs> and brooms. So yeah. when we were dead at night, you know, we would just like play hockey with, with dip cans and brooms throughout the store and shit like that. Like we were always doing just bizarre crazy shit you know i had um we would stage happenings in the store so like one of my co-workers would take off his uniform and put on his street clothes and then he would come in and pretend like he was going to steal beer and, like i'd leap over the counter and chase after him and the people in the store would just be like what the hell is going on you know and it just uh 
and he'd be like this huge guy, but I was like five foot two mm -hmm. and I'd go leaping over the counter and I would drag him back in by his shirt, you know, and, <laughs> and it was just, we were bored. So we would do these things and, uh, just people just to see what people's reactions would be. So when clerks came out, I was just like, Oh my God, these are my people, you know? Mm -hmm. Uh, so I was, have been in love with it. Um, I watched the second one. I didn't love it the first time I saw it, but then I saw it again and I really liked it. This one, it, um, it's interesting because I guess you could watch it and go, well, they're just rehashing a lot of the first movie stuff. And there is a lot of callback to, to the first film. And it has reason though. It's not just because he couldn't think of anything else to do. It was, there was a purpose to it. And I just, I, there are things that happen to these characters that we've known for 30 years and it just, it, you know, you feel like you know them and it just hits you in the feels, you know, good or bad. And I just, um, yeah, I just, I loved it. And I think it's, it's the perfect way to round out the, these, this story with these characters. And yeah. Um, so if you are a fan of Clerks, or just Kevin Smith in general, uh, I highly recommend it. Yeah, I, I, I've been meaning to see it. I really, I like Clerks. I like Clerks too. I probably like more of Kevin Smith's oeuvre than a lot of people do. Like, I I thought Tusk was pretty good. I think Red State is, is sort of underrated. I, I adore Red State. Yeah. I do. Uh, I wish he had gotten to do the ending he wanted to do with, because, uh, but he didn't have the budget for that. Yeah. But I think it, you know, I think it would have been, really cool if he'd gotten to do the ending he wanted but i still really love that movie uh tusk i was kind of thrown off the first time i watched it because i was like this is fucking weird and it was really the johnny depp character that <laughs> was like well, what the hell <laughs> yeah i think that's where i kind of get lost in that movie where i think that character is sort of unnecessary and a little a little too arch for what that movie yeah. is doing even though it is about to be turned into a walrus um, but there are some legitimately like Michael Parks is amazing. I love him in anything. And um, there are some really creepy, creepy moments in that movie. Mm -hmm. Like and, when we go underwater and you see the previous, you know, the previous attempt um, just dead underwater. And like, that's creepy as hell. The whole premise is disturbing. And I just, I like it. Not a fan of yoga hosers. I, I haven't even seen that. I I, I heard I enough about that. Like, yeah. yeah. But I liked, um, like, I'm I'm someone who really enjoys Jay and Silent Bob Strike Back, but not really Jay and Silent Bob Reboot, I, I think was going back to the well maybe once too often with that. I agree. Um, but I do think the Clerks movies are kind of interesting in that they seem to be the things that Smith sort of uses, the vehicles he uses to sort of describe where he is in life, you know? Oh, yeah. Like, 100%. You know, Clerks for sure is, is you know, the life that he knew and the life that he was living, working in the, <laughs> you know, the, the quick sack. Then there's Clerks 2, which is more of, you know, approaching middle age and wondering what, you know, wh what ch your choices in life mean. And, and uh, you know, and it has some really funny gags in it. And from everything I understand about Clerks 3 is it's really him kind of, turning over his heart attack and what that yeah how that changed his life oh there's a lot of him in this movie and you can tell and you can feel it and then when you're people our age um who were in the same we've been in the same positions that he was in throughout his life you know as far as like when clerks came out i was right there uh, and i was doing the same shit uh when clerks two came out um I was actually working in a restaurant at the time, I think. So yeah, it's yeah. like, um, it's, but you know, you tend to be like, I've, I feel like I've gone through my life with these characters. And then, so the way that things take place in Clerks 3, it also, uh, particularly to someone in our age bracket, uh, it'll it'll hit home. And as a matter of fact, it was a, when I got done with it, um, Dan Chase had messaged me and I, 
I was like, oh, I'm watching Clerks 3. And he, big, huge Kevin Smith fan. So he was excited. And he's like, did you love it? And I was like, yeah, I did. Um, I was like, it made me cry. <laughs> I was like, it's actually a stark reminder of how old I am. <laughs> and it, so I found myself sitting after watching it. And it's very funny, too. It's not like it's a drag. Mm-hmm. But after it was over, I sat silent for probably five, ten minutes just contemplating. And it, I mean, it makes you think it, it puts into perspective where we are. And I I don't know. I I loved it. I thought it was fantastic. I thought it was a nice way to wrap up that whole part of his life and and their lives. And it just, it was, it was good. It was really, really good. And I didn't expect it to be that good. I was expecting more of a giant Jay and silent Bob thing, you know, where I was like, okay, we don't need this again, you know, (laughs) but it, But no, it was a really nice, well done story. And I tend to like his catalog more than not. Like I, um, Mm -hmm. Dogma is one of my favorite movies. I love Dogma. For sure. Yeah. And, you know, I, I think sometimes he gets a little bit of shit for having kind of carved out like this niche for himself where he's like a very popular podcaster and, you know, does his spoken word stuff and, and that kind of thing. And that just because he has sort of, you know, like, you know, made this, this career for himself outside of movies that every now and again, you forget like, Oh, he actually has made like, I'm a Jersey girl fan. I think Jersey girl is actually a very sweet film. And um, you know, I don't like everything he's done, but m- more than not. And, and, you know, like having followed him a little bit with, you know, with his heart attack and that kind of thing, and just, you know, enjoying the fact that he's still around to make this movie, I think is kind of, kind of great. You know, I'm, I'm, I'm really, I, I, I wish that more people would give him, more credit sometimes because you know when people talk about independent cinema it's like man clerks kicked the door open in a lot of ways and and no matter what else he did the rest of his life just making clerks should give him pretty much you know like carte blanche for the rest of his life to be considered a major filmmaker and and the fact that he's found like different distribution channels for his movies and is always willing to try the next thing, you know, um, in a, in a lot of his podcasts and spoken word st- stuff, he always talks about that Gretzky story of don't don't aim for where the puck is, aim where the puck is going to be, and he's still trying to do that. He's still trying to kind of innovate with not just the kinds of movies he's making. Like you can argue clerks three is just going back to the well, but from what I understand, again, I haven't seen it, but it sounds like he's, he's telling a more serious story and, and also trying to get that story out in a way that is more of a direct distribution channel. And it's always interesting for me to see him doing that kind of thing of like, I, you know, how do I go straight to my fans and avoid all of the, sort of corporate theater process and again you know take take it how you will but i think he's just an endlessly fascinating guy oh yeah hell we watch uh we have like all the evenings with kevin smith we have all of them on blu-ray like and i've watched them multiple times like it's just and that's just him answering questions from the crowd you know and telling stories and he's a fantastic storyteller Mm -hmm. and uh, it's really fun to watch him tell stories and i think with um with the clerk series in particular and actually hell even like mall rats those things all speak to gen x and it's it it's like the stories of our generation and we were there for a lot of it. it it's not not just there for the movie but like they're in the same place at the same time in our lives and it's um I don't know. I think it's just really special. And I've always appreciated him as a filmmaker too, because he'll be the first one to tell you, I don't know shit about running a camera. I don't know shit about framing a shot. I tell them what I want and they get it for me. And I've always appreciated that because filmmakers feel like they have to come out of the gate, 
and know how to do every single job on a film set or they will never be successful. And he will straight up tell you, I don't know anything about that stuff. Mm-hmm. I know how to tell a story and I tell them what I want in the, in the frame. And then they figure out how to do it. And that right there shows that you can do it. You just have to be creative and you have to work hard and be willing to put everything on the line because everybody knows the story about when he made clerks, he didn't have any money, but he maxed out his credit cards to make this movie. And it was either going to be a, it was either going to do well and make him money or it was going to sink him and he would be broke, but you know, it did well. And I think it's because he was telling an honest story you know, about real, like, they're not real life people, but they could be, you know, these people, you know, people like that. And that was the thing that has always drawn me to him is that his characters are real. And they feel like my friends, you know, they like, Oh, I know a guy just like that. Like, I've always loved Randall. Mm -hmm. He's a bit of a dick bag at times, but he's always been my favorite, my favorite Kevin Smith character, just because he is a very real character. So yeah, I do highly recommend that. And uh, I'm curious to see what you think about that one as well. Yeah, yeah, I'm excited to see it. One, once I get kind of caught up on uh, um, on on the horror viewings, I really, like, that's going to be a, you know, I'm going to sit down for an afternoon for myself and watch Clerks 3 and kind of, and just kind of enjoy it. Like, enjoy it for what it is. And, and as you said, you know, a lot of, of these movies have weirdly been... Uh, you know, kind of a soundtrack to Generation X. Uh, so it'll be fun to kind of look at it through that lens too. So yeah, I'm excited about that. Um, all right, let me do one more before I, I give you the last one. I watched Bodies, Bodies, Bodies. Oh! <laughs> yeah. Did you, did you think it was fun? I oh, did. No. I, oh, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I No, I, I totally did. Um, I thought... I went into it and and I kind of heard that it was like the characters were unlikable and, you know, like a, a little bit of hemming and hawing about like, oh, this stupid, you know, Gen Z bullshit. And watching it, I was like, oh, I don't think these characters are terribly unlikable. I mean, they're young and they do stupid stuff, but that's being young. Right. And even Pete Davidson, who I normally am a little reluctant to get behind, um, I thought he was fun in it. Uh, I thought he was great. And I'm not a big, I'm not a big, I don't, I don't have an issue with him. And I'm not a like one way or the other with him, but I don't, I thought he was just hilarious in this movie. Yeah, he he's really good and um Maria Bakalava, the the one from the the last um Borat movie. Yeah. Uh she's really good and and so it's it's kind of an interesting kind of semi slasher, one of the best uh <laughs> the the best descriptions that I read of it is it's like if a slasher movie took ecstasy and eh. s- and accidentally bumped into Agatha Christie at a <laughs> rave. And and I that's like it. yeah, that's kind of how it it feels like it it starts as a slasher and it, but it it's almost like a giallo, like a a very Gen Z giallo kind of thing where Gen Z giallo uh, if you will. Um where it's it be, it, it has that who done it feel. Mm-hmm. of like okay people are dying we know that in the whole setup of bodies 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 for listeners who don't know is that it's a game that they're all like it's a bunch of kids who are you know it's the uh overeducated wealthy underemployed kind of thing and they're all going to a friend's house Pete P. davidson's house uh while his parents are away just this big sprawling mansion and they're having a hurricane party because a hurricane is blowing in. Very Friday the 13th, right? Like a storm blows in and then the lights go out and then people start dying. And yeah. so the question is, like, who is who is doing these murders? And they they start the, the, the party by playing this game, Bodies, 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 which is you turn out all the lights. 
Uh, and then, you know, somebody is handed a piece of paper that says that they're the killer and they tap you on the back and you have to pretend to be dead. Then the lights come on when somebody discovers the, you know, in quotes, dead body and yells bodies, bodies, bodies. And then you try to figure out who the killer is. And, um, so that's the premise of the movie. And sure enough, somebody turns up dead. And then the game of bodies, bodies, bodies becomes very real as people are trying to figure out who is killing uh, all members of their friend group. And uh, there is a third act reveal (laughs) of what's really going on (laughs) that was absolutely wonderful. (laughs) That was the best thing ever. (laughs) Right, and it kind of sold the theme. Like, it's one of those movies where the last couple of minutes kind of recontextualize the rest of the movie, and you realize, like, oh, okay, so this is is a much different movie than I thought it was going to be. And I understand what happened. I understand these characters better and all of that. And um, there... (laughs) There's a great line, and I'm sure you enjoyed this as well, where in in there's a moment of tension as some characters are arguing with one another, and one of them, who may or may not be the killer, is holding a gun. And somebody says, like, she hate listens to your podcast in reference to another character. <laughs> and the, the, the girl is like, wait a second, you don't like my podcast? And she says, well, what is the podcast about? And she's like, well, it's like hanging out with your funny and interesting friends. And the girl holding the gun kind of rolls her eyes a little bit. And she's like, what? You're rolling your eyes right now. And she's like, you hate my podcast. It's not easy. I do a lot of work on that. Like, I have to schedule people. And there's a Google (laughs) calendar. (laughs) And then kind of dries up because that's all there is to it, really. And... It was very funny. I thought that was uh, a, a wonderful line. But yeah, it's a like it's a solid, a solid movie. Um, that was a very pleasant surprise for me because we went to see it when we had a power outage one night, and we actually ended up going to the movies two nights in a row because we had no power. So uh, the first night we went to see Bodies, 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 and I was like, well, I don't know a whole lot, whole lot about it, but you know, let's check it out and. I had a great time. It was fun as hell. And I'm like, oh, well, that was a really nice surprise. And then the next night we went to see Orphan First Kill, which I also had a lot of fun with. So, um, yeah, that was that came out of nowhere and was really fun. So if, I don't know. I think there have been people who've said they were avoiding it because of Pete Davidson or, you know, whatever. I'm like, just fucking watch the movie. It's a lot of fun. Yeah, 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 yeah. It, it all the stuff I'd kind of heard about it, I think was more a little bit like people kind of bristling at the fact that Pete Davidson was getting a lot of attention and felt a little overplayed, perhaps a little too ubiquitous. Um, but he's good in it and, and it's a fun movie. It's a, it's a really clever film. Uh, again, I don't know where it's going to fall for end of year. I don't know if it'll make my top 10, but I had a good time with it. Yeah. Um, so, you know, it, it not, maybe not the most ringing endorsement other than to say like, Hey, if you want a good entertaining, like horror comedy, it, it has some really funny moments in it. It's, it gets really bloody at times. I really like the, uh, the older boyfriend. Oh, um, that broke my heart. <laughs> he's so funny. Oh, are we playing werewolf now? Arr. And they're all just like. <laughs> <laughs> about to stab him to death uh, i thought that was but really he funny. Does, yeah i love that because he doesn't get it and he thinks they're still playing right yeah and they think and they think he's trying to kill him so <laughs> and when they're when they're asking their friend about him like how well do you know him how long have you two been dating oh i know like two weeks and she's like well what's his last name and she's like well all right i know I, his name is greg and he's a a, a moon libra and and they're like, you don't even know his last name. And she says, there's a lot you can tell about someone by knowing they're a moon Libra. <laughs> I also love it, too, that they keep referring to him as the vet. Yeah. They're like, oh, oh, he was a vet. You know, so then that makes them think that he's, like, really dangerous. Yeah. <laughs> Only he's not a, he's not a, like, a war vet. He's a vet vet. <laughs> he's a veterinarian, <laughs> he's a vet. yeah. Is he? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 
<laughs> this is a it's a classic example of a lot of uh just hilariously hilarious misunderstandings and i love that shit when it when it's well written and it comes together well then i gotta give them props and i think it was very clever and i think it was very well written and it's yeah it, it's, it's a very it, bloody threes company ah <laughs> Yes, including all the Pratt falls. <laughs> <laughs> right, and there are there are some like good good falls in the in the movie. Um, yeah. Uh, all right. Hey, before we wrap this up, I'm going to uh, do a quick shout out to the the listeners and and a bit of a request here. So uh, you know, not to end a show. I, I didn't start a show with a kid story this time, so I'm going to end with one. Um, okay. So we're we're on the hunt for um a good parental control app uh because you know every now and again the, the kids just get lost in their devices and you just gotta kill them you know like you gotta turn them off and so i'm trying to find something that works on like windows computers as well as like ios devices and the the funny part of this story, the, the the honest to goodness request is if somebody out there is a parent and has a good recommendation, let me know. We're, there's one that we're trying right now, the Norton 360 one, and that seems okay, uh, but it's early goings. Um, but the funny part of it is I have to, like, to test out different apps, I have to get the kids to give me their devices to see if I can stop them. And they don't realize that it's like, you know, choose the method of your destruction <laughs> kind of thing where they, right. I'm like, Hey, I need to test something. Give me your phone. And they're like, Oh, what are you giving me? What, what do I, uh, what do you need my phone for? I'm like, Oh, I'm just going to download an app on here. And they're like, Oh, okay. And I'm like, Oh, you fools. You know, <laughs> <laughs> you don't even bother to ask the follow up of what app, you know, it's just, well, this allows me to listen to you at any time. Um, but it's, uh, it, it's a fun little struggle of like, how, how do I find a way to limit their ability to get up to shenanigans? But so the, uh, does it like power down their devices or does it just like stop internet or it, it, no, it doesn't stop it. What it does is, uh, for the computers, the one that we're trying now, it just throws up a lock screen that's like, hey, you need a pin to unlock this. Mm, okay. and, and you can do it through the app or you can set a schedule. And that's generally what we want to do is set the schedule. But every now and again, you're like, hey, we got to go. And they're like, I want to play computer. And you're like, I got to turn the computer off just to get you <laughs> to get some clothes on. So, you know, you want something that you can both do like lock a computer on demand and also have it set so that like, Hey, after nine o'clock that turns off so that they don't get up in the middle of the night and play Minecraft, like a bunch of Minecraft junkies, which is what they are. And yeah. So it, and it's shocking that there's not, you know, like Norton's the first one that's like, oh, it'll work in both places. Because there are some that'll work on computers and there are some that'll work on their phones and tablets, but not one that works on both. So that's huh. the rub. I know, I know you would think like given how many, you know, people out there with kids are like, I need to control this at least a little bit. Um, You would think that there would be more of an option, but uh, it's, <laughs> you know, <laughs> me shaking my fist at the sky is what's happening now. Um, but yeah, so, you know, if, uh, if one of those things were to, uh, be in your wheelhouse listeners, then, uh, please let me know. Um, well, good luck with that. Yeah. Thanks. Um, hey, before we get out of here, anything you're looking forward to watching over the next, uh, 30 days? I know next month we're going to be doing top 10 lists, but is there anything else that you're, uh, you're excited about? You know, I, I think I've, I want to say like, I've gotten to see most of the thing. Oh no, I still haven't seen the menu and I really want to see that. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. That's the one thing that is stuck in my craw that I haven't gotten to see yet. And, um, um, that 
and I have a feeling just based on the premise and the cast and everything else involving it, I really feel like it would be a contender. So I want to make sure that I get to watch that one. But now I'm trying to scrub all my end of the year stuff, but I got to tell you what, I keep getting distracted by older shit. Um, like we finally watched dash cam from last year. Uh, um, the, the, the one about the, the girl who goes yeah. to England and yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah. 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 And, um, I don't know why, like when I should be cleaning up my 2022 watches, we're like, Hey, let's watch this movie from last year. That doesn't really matter if we watch it right now, but why not? <laughs> so, yeah, I, uh, I, all right. I, you know. I, I was gonna get into a discussion about dash cam with you, but I've just I I don't have it in me. It is uh, I, I I'm so torn about that movie. Well, I I heard going in from you and Duncan and everybody else that uh, that she, you know you pretty much hate the main character. She is a pretty despicable person, but at the same time, I found her very entertaining. Like I just thought she was funny. Yeah. So yeah, you know. I, and it, I didn't, I didn't have any idea what I was getting into. Like, I had no idea what the movie was about. All, the only thing anyone had ever talked about was how much they hated the main character. So I, I didn't really know anything about the premise. So when that first, like, rears its head, I was like, what in the fuck is happening? <laughs> but in a good way. I, I was entertained by it. Like, it didn't, you know, blow my hair back or anything. But I, I did find it entertaining and, you know, funny. So there was that. Fair. It I, wouldn't have made it wouldn't have made my list if I watched it last year. Like it's not like I was like, God damn it, I missed out on a gym. No, I, I don't feel like I did, but it was still entertaining. Yeah, um, I'll give you my quick list of things that I will probably watch within the next two weeks for sure. So I want to see um, Speak No Evil. Mm -hmm. I want to see Soft and Quiet. Oh, I don't know about that. Um, which is, uh, which I, I've heard is, is pretty good as well. Um, I want to watch Something in the Dirt, which is the new Benson Moorhead movie. <gasps> oh. Yeah. Um, I still haven't seen Pearl, so I definitely want to catch up to that. Um, I want to see A Wounded Fawn, which is, yes. uh, w which is on Shudder now. And I'm probably gonna break down and watch Terrifier too because I've I've seen enough people it's saying fun. yeah I, like I had a real problem with the first one and I've seen enough people say like this is a drastic improvement over Terrifier. Yeah, you just have to be prepared for the almost three hour long running time. But uh, as far as uh, art goes, I loved him in this. I thought he was the the he's really becoming a defined character. And I thought that that was, that was really good. I love the lead actress. I thought she was fantastic and it's gory as all fuck. So, um, I mean, there are some really, really, really just balls to the wall murders in this movie that are really fun to watch, but it's way longer than it needs to be. And that I'll be the first one to say as much as I enjoyed it, it's way too fucking long. Yeah, 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 yeah. Um, right. So, eh, we'll. Eh, all right, but we'll we'll uh, talk about this and more next month when we we do our top ten list. So, uh, yeah. I'm excited. So, Jamie, as always, you know, I love you. Thank you so much for doing this every month. Yay! I look forward to it, and I love you too. And it's always fun. I hope the listeners get as much fun out of it as I do. Yeah, I mean, kind of. Who cares? If they, yeah, I mean, if they don't, fuck them. They know what they did. Yeah, you know what you did. All right, everybody, <laughs> we'll be back in a month.